on today's program, Convict, Convince, and Condemn. Hello, welcome. I'm Daryl Chesser, and welcome to Sea Life TV. I appreciate you stopping in to watch. Today, I want to talk to you about convict, convince, condemn. This is something I wrote back in 2016, but I'm going to uh, present it today to you because I believe it's important. It meant a lot to me today as I read it. I want to start first in the book of James, in chapter 15 or chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone sick among you? Let them call upon the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If they've sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Awesome. God is good. So now we need to decide if we are righteous or not. If we're going to pray, or pray uh, effectual, powerful prayers, right? Doesn't it all come down to that? The battlefield is in the realm of, are you righteous or are you not? Because if you're righteous, then... All of these good things come to the righteous. Uh, all these things come to the righteous. The righteous have all of the blessings. The righteous have all of the promise. The righteous have everything. <clears throat> the problem is some seek it with their own righteousness, their own self-righteousness, and others are not convinced of their own righteousness in Christ by faith. So, if you don't believe you're righteous, if you believe, you know, you've not been doing that well recently, maybe in your thoughts, maybe in your words or deeds or actions or attitudes or a multitude of things or things in your past or things in your future, you know, I don't know. Um, and you're born again and you're saved, but you, you don't believe that you're righteous. Then it's going to be very hard for you to uh, believe that your prayers will come to pass to believe that God hears you. Uh, and so you're just kind of throwing them up there saying, look, I know I'm unworthy. I don't, I don't deserve anything. And I'm a horrible person. But if you just do this for me, I'd be really grateful. Well, that's not a powerful prayer. So if you understand that concept, don't you think that all of the attack of Satan, it, for the believer especially, is going to be in that area of your righteousness. His lies and his destroying is going to be in that area of, of to convince you of something different than what is true. So he'll, he'll probably come to you and, and say things like, oh, you, you think you're righteous? Remember what you did last week? Or what about the glance at that pretty woman this morning? Or that thing you did when you were younger that no one knows about? You aren't righteous. You're a poser. Forget about your prayers being answered if this is the way you're hearing him. Because the enemy is a master, master class at, in first person voice, whispering into your ear, and you believe it's your own thoughts, condemning you. Condemning you of things that are just gone. And so, now, is anybody going to come out of this barrage unaffected? or unscathed, this barrage of condemnation, and, and, and last to have faith long enough or powerful enough to see things happen. See, that's where we, we kind of miss it, is we believe for some reason it's my faith. Well, no, it's, it's the faith of Christ Jesus. I, I borrowed his faith. I have his faith. It was, it was through him and through his faith that I pray. It is, is it using his faith? In his faith, I'm, I'm righteous. In his faith, I pray powerful prayers. This is where the Holy Spirit rushes in to convince us. This is one of his jobs, to convince us of our righteousness in Christ Jesus. It's at this point that the, from the pulpit, in the reading of your scriptures, 
uh, and you with other people should be convincing people of their righteousness by faith in Christ Jesus and not diminishing them. Well, no, you've fallen short. Well, no, you need to do this and you need to do this and you need to do that. We have a lot of you need to do this ministries out there. So you are righteousness, righteous because of your faith in Jesus Christ, period. You can't, you can't argue that. You'll never be any more righteous than you are right now if you're in Christ Jesus. You'll never be any more righteous. No, that's right. I, I mean, I said it. Never be any more righteous. You are righteous because of faith in Jesus Christ alone. Oh, sure, you'll, you'll grow in grace and in faith and in holiness, which causes you to, to maybe act better and to speak better and all of those things, but you will never be more righteous than now. How could you be? If you received Christ Jesus and you are righteous in God by faith, how can you become more righteous? How in the world are you gonna find, where is this righteousness gonna come from? Where are you gonna find it? To, to whom do you go? Are, is it by keeping the law? <laughs> or maybe it's by doing good deeds again, because the world certainly thinks that the entire social justice movement is based on that concept. The entire CRT program is based on that concept. All of it is based on, well, if we take care of this, then you'll be righteous and all things will be well. Well, that's just, that's just bull. You all know it. We know it. You can't become any more righteous than you are right now by faith in Christ Jesus. It is impossible. But you can be and should be and, and will be, if you'll stay with it, more convinced of your righteousness than you are right now. More and more and more and more and more convinced of God's love and his righteousness that is in you and that his grace and his goodness. The more you're convinced of that instead of, constantly being hammered about your sins in the pulpit by your friends, by every prognosticator out there on YouTube, and everybody that sits there and goes, you know what we need is more judgment. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> okay, we need to be convinced of our righteousness because if you're convinced of who you are, if you're convinced of what you are, you're a totally different person. But if you believe there's no hope for you, that you're hopeless, hopelessly un- for instance, you're a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner and you have been saved by grace if you're in Christ Jesus. But you're no longer a sinner. You're a believer. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Well, I failed. I sinned. You fell back. Well, stop. That's not who you are. Let me convince you of your righteousness. Why are you playing in the mud over there? That, that's nothing. That's stupid over there. That's mud. Let's just wash it off. By the washing of the water of the word, let me convince you some more of your righteousness. In 1 John 3, uh, 19 through 23, this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts. And he knows everything. If, if, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts. And that he knows everything about us. He knows where all of the bones are buried, right? He knows where all of the secrets are kept. He knows every secret thought, intent of the heart, and every motivation. Everyone he knows. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence be, or boldness before God. And we receive from him, and we receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. What is his commandment? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is, my, this is the, the commandment, to, to believe in the one whom God has sent. Jesus Christ said that, I believe. Believe in the one whom Jesus, no, that was John. Believe in the one whom Jesus Christ has sent. That's the commandment. Yeah, maybe it was Jesus. I'll go look it up. And this is his, oh, right here, next verse. <laughs> and this is his command, Jesus, or God's command, and this is, what John is talking about, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another one another as he's commanded us. Now there, that's his command. Because you've kept the commands and you do what pleases him, you believe in God's son, that pleases God. 
Anybody that comes to God must come to him in faith. You must come to him in faith. It's impossible to please him without that. Now, what is that faith? Well, the faith of Jesus Christ. If you come in the faith of Jesus Christ, well, guess what? You please the Father because you're, you're, you, you've come in his son's faith and you believe in his son. You believe God's word about his son. And now because that, you, you will be in his son by that faith, reckoned in him. Look, God sees you in Christ. That's how it happens. When you are convinced of your righteousness and know that. Now, this is where it goes. Our hearts may try to condemn us, and they will. I mean, it's 24-7 to me. I mean, it's like, ugh, I didn't do this, or I should have gotten up earlier, I should have gone to bed earlier, I should have maybe done this, I should have done that, I should have blah, 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 blah. This leads us no good place, but God is greater than our hearts. God is greater than your hearts. If your heart's condemning you, it's probably the enemy. Because I, I know a lot of you believe the job of the Holy Spirit is to condemn sin. And we're going to get into that in a minute. Yeah, that's how you got saved, right? You were, you were condemned. The Holy Ghost condemned you or convicted you of your sin. He came to convict you of your sin so that you would know you need a Savior. And then you would hear the gospel. You would receive Jesus Christ. We did. Did you not confess that you were a sinner when you got saved? Isn't that part of it? Man, I, I'm a sinner. I do need it. Maybe you didn't say that out loud to somebody, but in your heart you're going, why in the heck would I need a Savior? Why would I need this salvation if I didn't think I was a sinner? Why would I need that? Why would I think that? No, you got born again because you understood, dude, I need Christ. I need a Savior. I, I'm a sinner. That we confessed sin. So now the Holy Ghost isn't doing that for you anymore. That, that's done. He's moved on to phase two. Why don't we move with him? Okay, now let's go on. We are confident before God because he loves us and he knows every secret about us. We are accepted and approved in the beloved, the, the Bible tells us. This is our acceptance. Let's see what John has to say a couple of chapters later. He goes, now, if you're convinced of this righteousness and that God loves you, you're born again and you're convinced of this then this is the confidence in approaching God that if we ask anything, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, this is the confidence in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, what's his will? His will is that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that Jesus even prayed then in John chapter 14, 15 and 16, two or three times in there, he goes, whatever you ask the Father in my name, Go to the Father and pray in my name. Whatever you ask him in my name, he'll do for you. That's the will of God. Now here we are, John, uh, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and he's telling us, if we ask anything according to his will, okay, we're in his will. We believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus said to go to the Father and pray anything whatsoever in his name, and he'll do it for us. We're praying according to our word. So it says, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Wow. Wow. I'm getting a little pumped up about prayer right now. What about you? Listen, look, let's look at one more thing that falls under the job description of the Holy Ghost. This is a great one. This is uh, Jesus talking in John chapter 16, verse 7 through 11. And this is in the New King James. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world, the world, the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, three things there. Let's go on. He says, of sin, because they do not believe in me. He will convict the world of sin. So we've gone there. We have confessed that we were sinners. It worked. Now we're in Christ. That takes us to the next thing. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me more. Now, how would that, what does that have to do with anything? Jesus is saying, this is before he, the, the cross and the resurrection, right? Jesus is telling them, listen to me, I'm going to go away. 
And the fact that I am going away is a very good thing because it will assure you of righteousness. In other words, if they don't know this yet, but when he's crucified for them, the sinless man goes to the cross for us and takes all all of that judgment of God on himself for us and for the whole world. He that was righteous became sin, was made to be sin for us, so that we who had no righteousness of our own might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So he goes to the Father and he says, you'll see me no more. That's a sure sign that the offering of Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God on the Christ, was accepted. He's, he, he was raised from the dead. We know, okay, if he's risen, then God was pleased with that offering. We know that really before he even went to the grave, it was, it was done. It is finished. That thing had already been taken care of. God was completely satisfied with what happened in Christ on that cross. Because of Christ Jesus, it was impossible for the grave to hold him. It was just... He's coming up. But the fact that we don't see him anymore in the Holy Ghost is now here and living inside of us is proof, is confirmation of our righteousness because Christ isn't here. And our faith is uh, in him is the righteousness of God. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Daryl Chesser believed Christ Jesus, believed God's word about Christ Jesus and it's accounted to me for righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The third step of these three things that the Holy Spirit came, it says, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. The ruler of this world is judged. Condemnation, sin, all of this stuff, death and murder, mayhem and stupidity, just a plethora of stupidity, all come from one place, sin. Satan, Satan, the thief, the murderer, the destroyer. He's been judged at the cross. At the cross, he was found guilty. He has been judged. Death, hell, and the grave, Satan, the beast, the antichrist, and all the false prophet, all the whole shebang. They are, they're done. Their fate is sealed. And guess what? So is ours. We were judged at the cross too in Christ. And by faith, that judgment that he took is credited to us. Wow, Satan has been judged guilty at the cross. He's toast. Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he, God, has made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. Man, that's some good news right there. And finally, the Holy Ghost comes to convince us of judgment, specifically Satan. That thief, murderer, and that destroyer has been judged. Stick a fork in him, he's done. So since we've confessed that we were sinners, and then we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation, and now we know that Satan has been judged, that leads us to conclude with this verse. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The Holy Ghost has done his work in us. We are now convinced of our righteousness in Christ Jesus. So we can pray powerful prayers right now. God is good and kind and he hears our prayer. Be confident of this. The prayer of a righteous man or woman is powerful and effective. And that, my brother, that, my sister in Christ Jesus, you are a righteous man. You are a righteous woman because of Christ Jesus. And your prayers are heard and God answers them. So that's some good news today.